What's going on, 49er Faithful, 49er Fam, 49er Gang? It's your boy 49er Dion here, back with another video. Definitely hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on them post notifications so I can keep you up to date on any and everything San Francisco 49ers. Now, I know since training camp has started, I've been a little AWOL here, man. Haven't put up a lot of content and whatnot, but that's just because I've been trying to watch things from afar and see how things shake out and develop. The one thing that I wanted to get into today was just strictly the fact that we've signed so many goddamn people. Yes, we've got injuries across the board. We got Bosa, we got K1 Williams, D Ford's nursing a leg injury uh, with his calf. We thought we had him good because he went and finally got his knee worked on, but there's something else again. Um, so basically, it's just a situation where, you know, we got. Uh, Richie James down Debo's uh, looking good he was on the sideline running the other day making things you know look good for him to have a possible return by at least week one which we definitely would need um, Brandon Ayuk right now man he's hurting you know with a hamstring injury so we got a rash of injuries and it's caused us to sign people the only thing for me is, is I just don't want people to get upset I mean to get excited and go crazy these are just cap bodies, people. We are not keeping all these people. They are not getting on the goddamn roster, okay? We have a set 53-man roster. I'm going to be doing a video about that because we'll have to cut them, you know, cut this roster down fairly quickly here. These are just camp bodies so that, the you know, the quarterbacks have somebody to throw to and, you know, these receivers have somebody to catch from. It's literally it. We didn't practice today uh, in the wake of the Jacob Blake situation. Um, it's very unfortunate, man, in this world where, you know, we we keep seeing this stuff over and over again, man. I know black men just being shot down, man, and it's it's an unfortunate situation in this world. And, you know, I could go all day on that and give people uh, things on that. But, you know, I'm just going to try to stick to football. This is the only place we can really find our peace and our solace. But I will say, man, this is a horrible time to be a black man in America. Um one thing I can fortunately say for myself, I work out in the mornings, I go hiking. I see cops every day. And what's funny to me is, is I've been noticing they've been real cool. You know, one of them I was uh, having, I was sprinting and I dropped something and he slowed down and he looked at me and said, hey, you dropped something back there. And he just drove off. Every cop that I've been seeing has just been waving at me, saying hello, speaking. I almost feel like there's certain ones out there that are just trying to make sure that they make a connection, you know, with an African-American man at some point. But, you know, um, they're not all bad, man. You know, you just got a bunch of people out there to get put on front street. And unfortunately, the situation is what it is, man. You know, the truth of it is, is, you know, police reform is needed, but back to football. So. I made a video, man, and it would not post, guys. God dang it, it would not post. It drove me insane, too, because I really wanted to put that one up. So I'm going to make this a long story short. Everybody gave me flack on Twitter, man. This dude was going back and forth for me for a good two, three hours because of what I said about Dante Pettis. In his interview, Dante Pettis looked scared. He looked timid. And he looked like he had a couple of issues, man, like some mental issues. Now, I'm not making fun of anyone that has mental issues in any way, shape, or form. Please don't get that twisted or misconstrued, people. I have a son who has some mental issues, so I know how hard that hits people and it hits home. All I basically said about Dante Pettis was if you have those issues where you literally have to talk to somebody to understand that Kyle Shanahan himself was not picking on you yet coaching you hard to get the best out of you, you shouldn't be playing team sports. And where have you been playing sports at and who has been coaching you? Because you must have been coddled and cuddled your whole career. It doesn't make sense that you had to have somebody explain to you that Kyle Shanahan wasn't being mean to you. Like, that doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? I feel like at the end of the day, it's very simple. You cannot play the receiver position play in the slot if you don't want to go over the middle and get hurt, if you don't want to get physical with dudes. Kyle Shanahan's system calls for physical receivers that can block. KB gets out there and block. Debo gets out there and blocks. Hell, Jimmy Garoppolo had a goddamn pancake last year. So if they all can do that, you should be able to do that too. He looked soft. He looked timid. And he's only had one good day in camp. 
So don't let the bullshit fool you when they up there and <clears throat> they really are trying their best to basically be very, very, you know, uh, nice to their players. And they, you ain't never going to catch no coach saying, oh, okay, let me go ahead and, and uh, say that this player is sucking this year or, you know, these things are great. So you have to look at the actual people that are there. Um, Grant Cohn is a trusted source because he's actually there at practice. You know, have his binoculars out, or if they let him get close enough to really watch practice, he can tell you who's doing what, what's going on. And you don't have to be a football aficionado to see if a motherfucker is catching the ball right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm sitting there looking at it going, okay, Dante's had one good practice. Now we're supposed to turn around and jump on this fucking gravy train. Oh, and we're supposed to feel bad for him because he didn't know how to separate his feelings and his emotions from the physical aspect of football, and he had to have somebody teach him that Kyle wasn't being mean, that he was just trying to coach him hard because he knows that he can get more out of him, and he knows that he has better to offer than what he usually has. So if y'all want to keep giving me shit about talking about Dante Pettis, you go right the fuck ahead. I do not care. I am not about to let up off the man. He's soft. He's timid. He was up there with his little tie-dye shirt on with a fucking cat on the pocket. He just looked like a chump. He looked like somebody was going to come take his lunch money right after the fucking interview. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else that interviewed, man, they had their things. They did what they needed to do, and it worked out well. Dante, man, he really sounded scared as fuck. And, I mean, if you really have those kind of mental issues, truthfully, take yourself, take some time away from football and go get some help. Get yourself right, get your mind right, get your body right for you to be able to either do this because when you play football, you have to have a passion for it. You need to eat, sleep, shit, and breathe football. And it didn't look like he did that. He did that the second half of his rookie year, and then last year he was relegated to the bench and he was comfortable with it. The man had the nerve to come on, uh, you know, with the national media and say, if being benched for the Super Bowl doesn't, you know, light a fire under your ass, I don't know what does. And those aren't his words verbatim, but that's pretty much what he was saying. So you mean to tell me it took you till the Super Bowl, not all the other games you were inactive, not the fact that you only caught two touchdowns, not the fact that you were relegated to the fucking bench, for you to realize that you needed to have more of a passion and more of a fight for football? Now, don't get me wrong. All these wide receiver injuries have helped him tremendously because it's given him more time on the field, whether he runs with the ones or the twos. But I can tell you right now, if Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel are healthy, you will not see much of Dante Pettis because if Debo Samuel starts, you know, and he misses a couple of games, you'll most likely see KB and Ayuk. And you'll probably see Trent Taylor sprinkled in there, even Jawan Jennings sprinkled in there. But he's got to fight his way up the depth chart because he doesn't have the dog in him that all those other guys that I just mentioned did. Now, we did sign two people today, lackluster signings. We signed whack-ass Kevin fucking White. I am not impressed by that signing by any stretch of the imagination, people. Kevin White has been injury-prone since he came into the fucking league, has done nothing everywhere he went. So it doesn't make a difference where he goes. The man just ain't worth the dime. He can't stay off the injury list. Same thing with Jason Verrett. The only thing with Verrett is Verrett had a Pro Bowl year where he showed the fuck up. At least every now and then you see him in a couple of games. No, you, you did Jared, <laughs> Kevin White, eh, you'll see him. Then he'll get injured. So it's a camp body. I don't even know why the fuck we signed him. It was a waste of time. Like for me, I, I don't understand what it is with this organization and injured players and them thinking we can nurse them back to health. And 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 this guy's gonna be something because I'm Kyle Shanahan and 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 I'm John Lynch. Like that, guys. If these guys have a serious ass injury history, man, stop investing time and money in players that are not going to produce. At the end of the day, you either gonna produce or you ain't. And then we signed some other dude. His last name is Rivercraft, Rivercroft. I don't, Lowercroft. I don't know who the fuck this dude is. I mean, they showed a little video of this dude on Twitter breaking somebody's ankle. It, these are camp bodies, people. Straight up camp bodies. We have a full 53-man roster. These dudes are just there to fill just an open spot. They probably paid him next to nothing and give him veteran minimums and shit. Like, these dudes ain't finna make no squad. We signed a tight end a couple of days ago. That shit was a worthless fucking pick anyway. We already have Ross Dwelly. We already have George Kittle. We already have Jordan Reed. We already have Charlie Warner. We already have Daniel Helm. We already have, uh, I think his name was 
Chase Harrell or something like, like we have too many fucking tight ends. Like, I think it, it becomes a situation where I start to think that Kyle Shanahan is a hoarder of anything that resembles a receiver or a tight end. You know what I'm saying? The reason we keep signing offensive linemen, why? Because we need them. Ben Garland's down with an ankle injury. Western Bridgeburg going to start on the goddamn pup list. And that pisses me off because we pay that motherfucker a lot of goddamn money. And every fucking year he gets hurt. And you can't tell me that he doesn't. I know how he plays when he's in there. But the fact is, is you, if you have to be in there to, to do your fucking job. And if you're always on the sidelines because you're always hurt and you're always injured, you are an injury prone player. Those are facts that cannot be disputed or debated. I don't give a fuck how great you are when you're on the field. If you ain't never on it, you can't be great. Period. Somebody please, in any way, shape, or form, show me how that makes sense. When D4 was on the field, we we played very damn well. Defensive line did great. Our numbers went up. When D4 was off the field, we didn't play as well. But you know the city, then you know the thing about it, we still trucked on. We still played, and we still won a lot of games. So we have to make sure that we start the season with everybody, you know, fully healthy, ready to go. So all these guys that are injured right now, you're probably not going to see them for the rest of the time that we have to practice. Um, Nick Bosu was injured as well. Uh, but, you know, these anybody on the injury list, you ain't going to see for the rest of the damn preseason. The rest of basically training camp because there is no preseason. Um, but don't get your hopes up about any of these dudes we pulled off the street. Say for maybe Jonathan Cyprian. And that's just because the man has been performing in a very outstanding way. He's been doing very well. Jordan Reed has been shitting on Jaquaski Tart. Poor Tart. Just out there just getting murdered by Jordan Reed. Um, he's one of our... He, he is the best, one of the best route running tight ends, if not the best route running tight end in the league. And he did deserve to, you know, hopefully get himself back in there. Hopefully working him in and out of the lineup will keep him away from concussions because that's been the bane of his existence pretty much most of his career. It's either concussion or injury. And you got to be real careful with concussions, man, because, you know, to be flat out honest with you, you get too many of those, that can kill you. Why do you think Steve Young retired? Steve Young retired literally because the doctor told him, you take concussion on the field, you're going to die. That's going to be your grave. So Steve Young was like, nah, I got to go. His wife was probably like, you better, you better retire. You have your Super Bowl ring. You went through a nice long time of prominence. 49ers were great while you were there. I am so sorry, but it's time for you to go. And he understood that, man. So this training camp has been, you know, very good. Um, Trent Taylor's looked amazing. Um, KB has looked great. Um, and I'm telling you, watch out for KB, man. Watch out for KB. He, he about to do some spectacular shit this year. And if anybody winds up going against KB, if you know one thing about KB, he doesn't get injured. He's always available and always ready. I can get there has not been a game that he's missed due to any type of injury. KB is always ready. He's always available. And him and Jimmy G have built a very good relationship as far as a connection when throwing and passing. So you just have to give him the chance to be able to shine, and he will do great things. Raheem Dream has looked good. Jarek McKinnon has looked great. Jermichael Hasty has been a beast. Salvan Ahmed got cut, and I knew he was going to get cut because Jermichael Hasty just seemed to be the better prototypical Kyle Shanahan back, and Salvan Ahmed had a, had a fumbling problem. So I say all that to say we're having a really good training camp. Jimmy threw like three interceptions the other day. It's not the end of the fucking world. His training camp, he always has his moments in training camp where he doesn't perform great. But when the season comes in, the man went 13-3 and and took us to the fucking Super Bowl. I don't give a shit that he didn't make that, that throw to Emmanuel Sanders. He took us there. Nobody else was getting us there. Last person who took us there was Colin Kaepernick. So with Colin, we went, you know, one year. We got to the NFC Championship the next. So we need to do that again. But this time we need to get back to the Super Bowl. We're going to win that motherfucker, and that's it. So um, thank you all for watching. I appreciate everything, man. Definitely hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Trying to get these subs up. And uh, definitely I'll be continuing to uh, bring you all some great content. Um, but training camp has been going well. Everybody's been doing great. Um, KB is going to be a beast, mark my words. And the defense has looked great. Fred, uh, Fred Warner been out there shitting on people constantly. Um, Quan Alexander's been looking good. Drake Greenlaw's been doing good. 
Um, he got beat by Jamichael Hasty, but Hasty is way faster than Dre Greenlaw. We all know Dre Greenlaw is not the fastest person on the planet, uh, but Dre Greenlaw still does is out there doing great work. Uh, Tarverius Moore has been looking great. He's been playing a little bit of nickel with uh, K1 Williams down. Um, you know, our safeties are still looking great. Jimmy Ward looks awesome. This new uh, defensive backs coach that we got um, is put, playing, putting a lot more man coverage into play, which thank God I've been waiting for that because man coverage is so vital to being able to win because the zone coverage, they got soft spots where you can just sit down in that zone and eat us alive and pick us apart. If you got a man coverage every now and then, it it, it shifts things and it, it mixes things up so it doesn't allow you to be stagnant and to be predictable. So I figure if you got a little man, you got a little zone, and you don't know when they're going to do that, shit, man, you, you, you're doing nothing but winning. But uh, thank you for everything, you know what I'm saying, for watching, and, and I appreciate the fact, you know, shout out to Roy Boy, man. He's my dog. He always watches my content. He's usually the first one to comment, and I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for always being there for your boy. Um, and I'll be back later on with some more news and some more takes. Peace.